poem takes the form of an erasure work pulled from a speech given by John F. Kennedy in 1961. It's, the, it's a part of a larger futuristic work where JFK speeches have been reconstructed in some conservative effort of revisionism by those who hope to sway a public who relies primarily on post war oral histories and a broken written language for the news and information. What I was interested in was capturing the uh, budgeting of economic surplus by the language of someone who cannot differentiate between the generative nature of public policy and sexual morality. Gain means one thing, personal power. So try to imagine a sort of anti kennedy reading this into a microphone uh, without the accident. Uh, the budget policy, as you should know, is also the public policy. Budget policy. Prospero, create the budge. A the, a the, oh budge. Desirable because it, because it moderates swings in private power. I have submitted to the budge. Prosperity generates sharply rising revs. The budge is appropriately paced to the expected rate of expansion. It will give stimulus to busy privates and grow stronger shoulders for continued gains. This is all part of the erasure bond. So this actual speech, I just went through and cut through it in order to create this like fictional character. But it's all kind of there, so it's already kind of tied in. It will give stimulus to busy privates and grow stronger shoulders for continued gains. The shift will be moderate and gradual, the experience abrupt and excessive. Swing in the budge, drain the vigor from the private, and halt its progress simultaneously. This will be repeated. Lays will rise from 1962 to 1963. The budge starts small and will move to surplus as the code strengthens with support. Pure men police the momentum. Prompt men invest in further expansion. Pace will yield a lion. Budge demands vices be weaker than anticipated. Less private. Power flow into the fig. Strong axes will rise further and budge will exceed expectations. A budge, a budge constructed to measure direct impact and receipt. The flow of total ending. The surplus will be higher if my operating level, either perspective or potential, is both a challenge and an opportunity. A surplus is a form of saving, an excess of cum over expenditures. Like any other form of saving, it, it releases labor and other productive resources, which can be used to create or house. If I'm not strong enough, the resources and labor will be wasted. The surplus itself will not be realized. If the necessary investment is, is present, the surplus will make possible the acceleration of growth by enlarging the future of productive power. Men seek help to meet this challenge. Seize the opportunity for measured guidelines. If demand falls short, more expansionary policies will be pursued. Vigilance and flexibility must be the guardians of optimism. War is a smooth operation when economic activity declines. These measures will enable federal fiscal policy to respond firmly, flexibly, flexibly and swiftly and richly reward us. Okay, this next poem is uh, I read, I, I wrote during uh, the middle of the economic downturn. It was pretty fucked up. The things you need to know: Sensex and Nifty are stock exchanges in India. LEH, which uh, the stock symbol for Lehman Brothers. Arms are adjustable rate mortgages, and RPGs are a terrible way to die. It's called Egos, Wall Street Confidential. I gave up Nancy, my wife, for the private and inauspicious love of a Komodo dragon. I gave up my vegan roots for Xanax, Fox, Uganda, and beef. I traded Pap's blue for blue truth, blue tooth, my nipple ring for a ranch in Naples. I learned everything has a price, especially people. I gave up people. That is, I gave up tangible currencies. I gave up the cause for the good fight. I gave up tax reform for motion sickness, welfare justice for the military industrial complex. I encouraged bootstraps. I still fly my own baloney. I once sold very, very high. I shorted LEH to flatline EKG, as all of you tore through loan arms like RPGs. I found Sensex not so nifty, so I fabricated futures, hedged my bets. I huddled, negotiated, undercut my mentors, missed a catch, caught a block and punted, wept openly and showered with the team. We agreed it was a job for nobler men. We agreed it was a job for cannibals. 
we ushered each other dripping through the, court, through the corridors, patenting our new bruises. We were our, parent, our parents' helioscopic somethings, precious and peripherally viewed, a poorly inked woodstock woodcut, the tambourine and the sound of the tambourine snapping. Sometimes I still blush when people ask for directions. Sometimes I still worry to think. Okay, this is the last song. Um, it's called Argus. Argus is the name of Odysseus, Odysseus's dog. Uh, when Odysseus came back from his travels, he found there were a bunch of people in his home, a lot of suitors trying to get hold of his wife and his, his, all of his stuff. So he dressed up like one of them in order to invade the place. Um, and the only person that recognized him was his dog named Argos. And uh, he couldn't approach his dog because he didn't want the dog to know him. And Argos is like flying dead, flying in a pile of shit. His, uh, he could only wag his tail. So what Odysseus did basically was he couldn't go near him, so he just he shed a single tear and he walked by him. And Argos immediately died. So this is called Argos. Um, it's Odysseus teaches one of his new dogs, one of Argos' kids, how to say, I love you. Uh, and all of the sounds in the poem are sounds that dogs might actually be able to make. So this is going to be really hard because it's all dog sounds. And I don't agree. Argus. Ar! Oh, Ar! Oh, Ross Ar! How you wore our iron ore over Troy. Air your arrows. Our ears were used, wanting of your airy rouge arrows. We earned your arrows. You earned our eyes, sir. Our, our hearts wavered after ruining years worth of woes, heirs. I, Arturo, heir of Argos, rule, rude, roared a ruining yar. Whenever a euro won, you wild away, warning us of what you worship, really. We roared wags as Eeyore's hairy rear. Without Argos, what? War. Here with Argos gaining an eerie, angry rendezvous. Rendezvous. Warped wedding of war. With us, what? We are the awful. We have the awful aura of inertia, haunting oral wear out, recalling glory in your war year, worthless place of you. Over an era, we wore your worries, warriors, on wooers of want, all worshippers of you. Now we're an area of weary, renewing well of woe, or worse, auroras of old age. Without war, you 